Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was in the tennis court one day, and while we were playing tennis, there was a group down from us, and man, they were like, one guy kept cussing and cussing and cussing. I said, that's enough. I turned and looked at him. I said, I hope you don't kiss anyone with those lips because it was disgusting. All of his friends began to laugh around him, but the dude got humbled. It's amazing how so many times people don't realize what's coming out of your mouth. And it's either blessing or cursing. And either you're going to curse yourself or bless you, or you're going to attach yourself to labels. The, that's where the, I, I'm going to share something very important. If you are living by the word of God, your word is good. If you're not living by the word of God, your word stinks. In other words, you can't be trusted. So if we live by the word, our word will be faithful. If you're not living by the word, your word ain't no good. Does everybody understand that? Psalm 23. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you don't know the word, then your word can't be good. Because you got nothing to compare with conviction. You got nothing to compare to you to tell you what's pleasing God or displeasing God. Of course, you got the Holy Spirit, I hope. But he uses the word of God. Psalm 23 and verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 23, verse 1. Can we speak it together? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Okay, that word want has multiple meanings. One of the means is that you're not going to lack. But the word want has a specific meaning. It means desire. See, when you want something, you desire something. I shall not desire those things that are evil. He said, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul, my will, my desires, my emotions, my imaginations, my thoughts. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yes, Though I walk through the shallow of the valley of the, or the, sh wait a minute. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. In other words, I will reject. See, it starts off with the word want. Evil, which we talked about as being a desire. In other words, I'm going to walk through this valley of death where I am hard pressed. And what am I hard pressed? Evil desires. Everyone say evil desires. evil desires. He says, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff shall comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head, my thoughts, with oil. You anoint my thoughts with the word. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Why? Because I'm constantly rejecting evil desires <laughs> all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever well look at you can't dwell in God's presence with evil desires amen, amen. it's just so powerful because we are what we call end time desires is what we're talking about today end time desires in the last days there will be so much wickedness and evilness that is hard pressing People don't even realize, look, at the enemy slips in so quickly and so easy. You don't even know what you're, you don't even realize you're doing something that's displeasing to God. You don't even realize it. Until either someone else corrects you or something occurs where there's a fall. And let me share this with you that no one, no one is perfect. We're perfect in him. 
Every one of us has fallen short to the glory of God. Amen? Every one of us is going to make a mistake. There's not one of us who's not going to make a mistake. It's what you do with it. Amen? In Ephesians chapter 2. And time desires. <clears throat> oh, hallelujah. And verse 1, Ephesians 2. And he says what? And you he made alive who were what? Dead in trespasses and sins. How many of you know sin is a representation of not only an evil presence, but an evil desire? In which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Well, look at the prince of the power of the air is the spirit of sin, Antichrist. Does everybody get it? It's the spirit of what? Antichrist. So is he trying to influence people to maintain or promote or accept evil desires? Yeah. The prince of the power of air. He says, well, we once walked according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Why? Because they're accepting an evil desire and it's promoting, and the fruit of it is disobedience among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh. Now, here we go again. Are you ready? Lust is nothing but an overwhelming desire. To what? Want. To want. Does everybody get that? So lust is an evil desire. When you lust over something, people always think of it as sexual. No, you can lust over anything. And why? Because an idol when that, be when that begins to happen, the heart becomes stony again because the old man begins to take over. And among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the what? Desires of the flesh and of the mind. Desires of the flesh and of the mind. So what at first occurs is there is a desire that's infiltrated through um, into me and you in the area of what we call a fiery dart or a corruptible seed. And so in this, it begins to become an evil desire. It begins in our thoughts. Everything begins in the thoughts. And then it, and, and then it, it manifests through the flesh. Where by nature, we were children of wrath just as the others, but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loves us loved us even when we were dead in our trespasses he made us alive together with christ for by grace you've been saved by his plan of escape and raised us up together to make us sit together in heavenly places in christ jesus that in the ages to come he might show us exceedingly uh, riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in christ jesus so the prince of power of air the antichrist spirit that enforces evil desires to mankind to bring people into the realm of disobedience. Has everybody got that? Daniel 7. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. End time desires. How many of y'all know we're in the last days? Man, we're in the last minutes. It's getting crazy. In verse 23 in Daniel 7. Now, when the word of God, when Daniel's having these visions, God is explaining certain things to him by the uh, angel that sent, he sends to him. And the word beast is a representation of fallen angels. These are called beasts. And he talks about the four beasts. And the angel begins to explain certain things to him. Now, I'm, on, I'm going to take this as a, as a metaphor so we get a little understanding of where we're at and what's going on. Thus, he says, the fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth which shall be different from all the other kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth. 
So we know that the fourth beast is going to be associated with the book of Revelations that's going to be used to devour the whole earth. It will trample it and break it in pieces. The ten horns are ten kings, or what we call ten nations, who shall arise from this kingdom. So out of this fourth beast, there's going to be a kingdom that will be associated, will have a covenant with ten kings or ten nations. And another shall rise after them. He shall be different from the first ones and shall subdue three kings. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High. Now, I want you to understand now. I want to go back, not look physically in arena, but I want us to look spiritually in arena. Remember, the Prince of Power of Air is associated with the spirit of Antichrist. So what we're seeing here is a manifestation of the Antichrist spirit. Is everybody with me? It said, it shall persecute the saints of the Most High, shall intend to change times and laws. Then the saints shall be given into his hands for time and times and a half time. In other words, for three and a half years. This is prophetic of the things that are going to come. But I want you to understand something, that the word of God is multidimensional, past, present, and future. So there is a prophetic time for this to happen. But I want you to know that this has already happened also in a certain arena because I want you to grab hold of something in this country. When Obama became president, he was the pompous. Is everybody with me? Why? Because he allowed persecution to Christians. People don't realize how much. People don't realize how much. He was, um, there were more whistleblowers arrested during his administration than all other presidents, but you won't hear about it. And these whistleblowers were exposing all kinds of things that was going on. But the media won't tell you. And it says, and he shall intend to change times and laws. Many, let me tell you something. One of the main focuses was the beginning to change constitutional things. So I'm, I, okay, so the Antichrist spirit was used in this man in preparation for, see, you got to begin to begin to use things through the spirit first so things can fall into place later. Because during this time, it was a rise of darkness. Much persecution. That's why they didn't want walls or protection. They were just allowing everything. In other words, they're still trying to change the laws. In fact, they won't even invade the laws with immigration, will they? No. So all of these things are manifesting. You're seeing the fruit, the ripple effect of all of this stuff that's happening. It says, but the court shall be seated. In other words, the Lord is saying, Come on, we're going, to have a, we're going to have a hearing. And they shall take away his dominion. And the dominion, and to consume and destroy it forever. So we know that this is going to happen. But right now, that dominion is being taken away. And then, the, then the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole earth shall be given to the people. The saints. Of the most high I want you to know something that that is happening right now righteousness is going to begin to rule not for a long, not for a long time but it's going to begin to rule because it's exposing people don't realize see when righteousness is not beginning to rule darkness is not exposed when righteousness begins to rule darkness becomes more and more exposed all over the place and it says, his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey Jesus. So I want you to understand that Jesus is beginning to reign even more through his body. Remember we shared before that the body of Christ is beginning to penetrate darkness. It's, it's like an arrow. Do you ever see those ships that go and, and, and break up ice? This is what's happening right now. It's breaking up all kinds of stuff. It's exposing everything. It's penetrating because God is beginning to bring in that harvest. He's exposing and hoping that they will turn because we're coming to a close soon. Is everybody okay? Amen. Hallelujah. Again, the same spirit of Antichrist entered through that presidency and administration of Obama and, 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 and the power of evil desires was released to America. That's why you're still seeing uprisings. You're seeing all kinds of stuff going on. Look at the powers of darkness have infiltrated colleges and all kinds of stuff. You got goofy professors 
You got goofy teachers. These people are demonized. You got congressmen uh, on TV and all kinds of stuff trying to get rid of a president instead of trying to bring unity. And, and you got a, a, a democratic party that's just, just saying, we are not going to even approve anything. Then what the heck are they there for? So they're not really serving the people. They are serving themselves and have no idea that most of them are serving Satan. They are serving Satan, and they are servants of Satan. That's why they're called the left. Hallelujah. All glory. And again, now, um, there are those who are American people who are able to resist these evil desires. Amen? But you can't do it without Jesus. Um, the problem is, is there's many who proclaim to be Jesus who are still not resisting those evil desires. Oh, hallelujah. So actually what was going on, he was trying to change laws to promote evil desires. How about same bathrooms for everyone? That's promoting an evil desire. How about putting a rainbow on the White House? That's a stinking evil desire. This is the age we're in right now. This is what's happening. Why? Because there's going to be a climax of things. End time desires. In Daniel chapter 8 and verse 23. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 23, is everybody there? It says what? In the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressions have reached their what? Fullness. So you got to understand that there's going to be a reaching of the fullness of sin. That's why the word says that the last days will be known as the days of Noah. Amen. And Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> a king shall rise having fierce features, who understands sinister schemes. His power shall be mighty, but not by his own power, because it'll be demonic power. He shall destroy fearfully, and shall prosper and thrive. He shall destroy the mighty and also the holy people. Through his cunning, he shall cause deceit to prosper under his rule. Now, I want you to grab hold of something because we are, we are in a time right now of prosperity. We're in a time of prosperity. And the enemy, so he's saying he's going to destroy many with, he's going to destroy many with prosperity because, because many are going to fall into the arena of love of money and fall away. He shall exalt himself in his heart. He shall destroy many in their prosperity. Again, he's going to destroy many in their what? Prosperity, because their prosperity is going to become an idol. He shall even rise against the prince of princes. And he shall be broken without human means. And the vision of the evenings and mornings which was told is true. Therefore, seal up the vision, for it refers to many days in the future. Now, this was given to Daniel. Again, he's going to destroy many with what? Prosperity. Remember, the word says that it rains on the wicked and the righteous. It rains on the wicked and the righteous. <laughs> but many will allow prosperity to become their God, and it will destroy them because it will bring evil desire how many of y'all know that the love of money is an evil desire first timothy chapter six is everybody okay Amen. you know we need to get updated on things that's what's going on and i believe that the holy spirit is that's what he's trying to bring to us so that we're not caught up or snagged in any snares. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 3. Would you read it? If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which accords with godliness, he is what? Proud, knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words from which come envy, strife, reviling, evil suspicions, 
useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. Why? Because of evil desires. From such withdraw yourself. Why? Because bad company corrupts good habits and your associations will bring in partations. Amen? Now godliness with contentment is great gain for we were brought for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can bring nothing out. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. But those who what? Desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts. Why? Because remember, those lusts are evil desires. Which draw, which drown men into what? Which drown men into destruction and perdition. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But you, O oh man of God, flee these things and pursue what? Righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called, and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. The love of money is evil desires. Look at There's nothing wrong with having money. God wants us, he, he, it says he delights in his children to prosper. But it's when prosperity has taken hold as an idol. People begin to fight for their money instead of the presence of God. People are willing to walk away from their calling to maintain money. People are willing to stop, quit their vows before God for money. 2 Timothy chapter 3. This is going to continue until it maxes out. See, we're not to love money, but we're to love what God can do with the money. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, I love to give away money. I think it's great. Love to help as many people as possible. If I could write Jesus on every dollar bill or money I give away here. Sometimes I think, man, I'm going to write Jesus nice and red on this. I like to go around and just drop out of a plane a million dollars and put on it, Jesus loves you. Turn or burn. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Drop it in Washington, D.C. 1 Timothy chapter 3. Is everybody there? Yeah. woo <laughs> But know this, in the last days, perilous times will come. Hallelujah, we know this. What's the first thing? For men will be what? Lovers of themselves and lovers of money. They're called selfies. <laughs> Again, we have entered the selfie gen There's a selfie generation. They don't want to talk to them. The phone's right here. They go drive, they talk to me, hey, man, let's go. Let's go shopping. Ain't no person there that's on the phone. Selfie. Taking pictures of themselves all day long. Even the President Obama was doing it. <laughs> Part of the selfie generation. They'll be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Why? Because of evil desires that are allowing to reign in their members. Unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control. They're brutal, despisers of a good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure. Why? That's evil desires. Rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness and denying its empowering from such people, turn away. Don't associate. Reject. Again, this is the influence that's coming forth. And let me share again, and we've heard this before. 
It's coming from technology. It's coming from technology. The prince of power of air. Now think about this. What is the prince of power of air? They are radio waves. These are waves. Voice, strangers. People are connecting them through phones, through computers, through all kinds of media and whatever. And, and don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with this loose, used for righteousness. Flesh book. That's a selfie thing. My goodness. Every time I try to use it, I get frustrated. I say, forget it. I see all these goofy things come up. I'm like, whoa, yeah, no. You know, people, they don't want to, they, they can really rather say something to flesh book than face to face. Somebody probably slap them, that's why. <laughs> Hallelujah. Selfie generation. Why? It's established by evil desires. Amen? Second Peter chapter 3. We need to get in every school and tell everybody, who's in your mirror? Who told you that? I want to do a who told you that tour. <laughs> Second Peter chapter 3, is everybody there? Glory to God. In verse 1, let's speak it. Beloved, I now write you the second epistle in both which to stir up your what? Your pure mind by way of reminder that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days. Scoffers, walking according to their own lusts or their own what? Evil desires. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? They will challenge God. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willfully, they willfully. Why would some willfully do something that's displeasing to God? Because they have accepted evil desire and they've allowed a spirit to enter them. They willfully forget that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water by which the world that then existed perished being flooded by, with water. But the heavens and the earth which are now preserved for the same word, by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, do not forget this one thing that with the Lord one day is, is a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. And again, they're walking according to their evil desires, which is lust. They're rejecting the word of God. Only those, again, who live by the word of God, can you trust their word. Amen. Scoffers. These are individuals that um, they, they reject. They, they're always trying to mock or reject or compromise the word of God in every area. These scoffers, um, and many, look at, this has happened to even many believers. Why? Because they become influenced by these evil desires. They become scoffers. I don't know if you read about it, but there was a pastor. I saw it on the internet somewhere. There was a pastor that took all the Bibles, some Pentecostal pastor, I forgot what state, and he burned them all. He took all the Bibles out of the congregation and he burned them all. And he said he doesn't believe the word of God anymore. I mean, he's an idiot, but what can you say? Actually, he's a moron now because he knew the truth. But in this, I mean, this is an evil desire. To burn the word of God. What kind of example is that? I was blown away when I saw that. Again, uh, scoffers, are they, they're mockers. They're ruled under Satan's control, opposing righteousness. Opposing godliness. And they have no fear of the Lord. No fear. No reverence. No honor. No respect. And not even any respect for themselves. 
and Jude chapter 1. It's amazing on how many hearts begin to turn when God starts blessing them. Does everybody understand? That's where we got to be careful because we have entered a time, it's 5777, that is the year of Jubilee. God is going to prosper us, those who are in divine order. But we can never allow it to sway us. In verse 14, it says, Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these individuals, saying, Beloved, be behold, the Lord comes in ten thousands of his saints. To what? Execute, Execute judgment on who? All. On all. So that means you and I will return with the Lord, and we will see this judgment being executed. To, con to convict all who were what? ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in an ungodly way and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are what? Grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts. They mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be what? mockers, mockers, in the last time, who walk according to their own ungodly lust, which means what? Evil desires. These are central persons who cause division, not having the Spirit. They say that they're believers, but they ain't got the Spirit because they wouldn't be doing these things. Well, I'm a believer. Heck no. You wouldn't be doing these things if you are. Because the word believe means to follow. You got the spirit of Christ in you. There's a conviction. There's a counsel, correction. There's a direction. There's an area where God will bring us, grant us repentance so that we will be humbled. Everybody makes a mistake. You just forgive. You ask for forgiveness and mercy. Amen? And you get back in line. But these individuals do not. See, the selfie generation is associated with entitlement. It's false entitlement. And there are adults who have fallen into that generation, even believers who have fallen into that generation, trying to be entitled from God Almighty when they haven't earned anything. Does everybody understand that? Because the first thing you must do is earn God's trust, and then he begins to release more. Therefore, these are sensual persons who cause divisions not having the Holy Spirit. Because if the Holy Spirit is there, does everybody understand? If the Holy Spirit is there, there's holiness. If the Holy Spirit isn't there, there's not holiness. There's selfishness. Is everybody with me? Hallelujah. Romans 6. And where the Holy Spirit is, there'll be a holy desire. Romans chapter 6. Oh, glory. 6.11. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be what? Dead indeed to sin, which is evil desires but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let these evil desires or sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey its what? Lust, its evil desire. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. So one will produce righteousness, one will be unrighteous. Amen. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but under grace. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to you obey? You are that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to, 
to righteousness. But God, we thank that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart. Again, the heart. That from of doc, that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you present your members as slaves of uncleanness and lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. Wow. Sin is evil, desires. The weakness of the flesh, which is sin, our flesh is associated with evil. Your old man is, a, uh, is the carrier and promoter of evil desires. Amen? So we got to understand that these evil desires is carnal. It's carnality. It's lust. Promotes wickedness, lawlessness, uncleanness, and it all leads to death. Evil desires. Romans 7. In verse 13. Romans 7, 13. Has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not. But sin that it may appear sin was producing death in me through what is good. In other words, these evil desires are pr producing death to us if we allowed them to reign. So that sin through the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I'm carnal, sold under sin. But what I am doing, I do not understand what I will to do that I do not practice, what I hate that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in my flesh, in my old man, nothing good dwells. Nothing. For it will be present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do, but evil, evil desires, I will not to do, that I what? Practice. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but the sin or evil presence or evil desires that dwells in me. I find the law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. In other words, he's saying evil's in me, but I will to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind, that influence, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Remember, the battle is in your thoughts. O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind of Christ, hello, I myself serve the law of God. And with the flesh, the law of sin. So that's why it's so important to be filled with the Spirit of God. That's why it's so important to be feeding from the Word of God and living from the Word of God. In Romans chapter 8. See, one of the things that the law did through the Ten Commandments, it exposed evil desires, but they still didn't have dominion over them. Amen? But you and I do have dominion over them now. Why? Because we have the presence of the Holy Spirit who has dominion of Unholy spirits, <laughs> evil spirits. Romans 8, uh, 8, 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Here we go again. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he's not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. Why? Because you are living according to evil desires. But if you live according to the spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body you will live. In other words, you're putting to death these evil desires. For as many uh, as uh, led by the Spirit of God, these are sons and daughters of God. Does everybody see this? Amen? So if you live according to the evil desires, you're going to die. But if you live according to the Spirit, you're going to live. 
Psalm 37. End time desires. We've got to constantly battle these off. These are evil desires. Psalm 37. Psalm 37, verse 1. Do not fret because of what? Evil doers. Now, are evil doers those who are accepting evil desires? Yes. Nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord. Delight yourself. Delight yourself. Man, through praise and worship, just delight yourself. Delight yourself in the Lord. It's not a thing where uh, you're just singing to sing. You're singing to make connection. You're singing to honor him. Delight yourself in him. It, look at, it's not just a ritual. Does everybody understand it? It's a process. Jesus gave us this formula to process to enter into his presence. When he says, lift your hands to heaven, man, don't go halfway. You're going to get half full if you get full at all. And so what he's saying is, you're really not delighting yourself in me. You got to show him you're willing to delight yourself in him. You got to show him that you're willing to deny yourself. You got to show him that you are dependent on him and only him. Nothing else. Nothing else. Anything else. You got to show him that he is your source of everything. And everything else will become a resource. Amen? That's why he says, delight yourself in the Lord. And he shall give you the desires, the desires of your heart. Why? Because if you're truly delighting yourself in the Lord, the desires of your heart will no longer be wicked. They'll become righteous. Does everybody understand that? Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noon day. Powerful. Desires of, your, of the heart. In other words, so you and I got to constantly reject these evil desires to keep our heart pure, moldable. Amen? And Ezekiel 36. Remember, the old man carries a stony heart. Your old man carries a stony heart. Amen. And because of a stony heart, he carries evil desires. Ezekiel 36. End time desires. He says, for I'll take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into the house of true ministries. <laughs> into the land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean, and I will cleanse you from all of your filthiness and from all of your what? Idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk on my statutes and you will keep my judgments and you will what? Do them. Remember the desires of the heart. Those, that's why it's so important that you and I continue to reject evil desires because why? That stony heart will come back. And the old man would try to control you with a stony heart. Is everybody okay? In Hebrews 3. So idols are evil desires. Idols are evil desires. Many people become an idol to themselves. That's the selfie. Selfie is associated with the idol. They're the I God. Maybe we ought to print shirts. Probably sell a bunch of them that say selfie. I want to be a selfie. 
<laughs> and then on the back, I, God. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Hebrew. Three, seven, I think. Let me see. Yep. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you will what? Hear his voice. Do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. In a day of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me and tried me, and saw my works forty years, therefore I was angry with that generation, and said they always go astray in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you a what? Evil heart of unbelief or a hardened heart and departing from the living God. But exhort one daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin or evil desires. For we have become partakers of Christ. We have become partakers of Christ if what? If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice and do not harden your heart, as in rebellion. Wow. 2 Corinthians 3. It was like the matrix, you know. Got plugged in. <laughs> Hallelujah. Holy Spirit download. That ought to be a good teaching in itself. 2 Corinthians 3, 7. Is everybody there? Let's do it. But if the ministry of death written and engraved on what? Stones. Stones. Was glorious so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation had glory and the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. See, we are in the ministry of righteousness. That's why we have the Holy Spirit, because the fruit of the Holy Spirit is always producing righteousness. But if you're not rejecting evil desires, you cannot produce the fruit of righteousness. It will be rebellion. It will be lawlessness. It will be selfishness. Amen? All of these areas. So what he's saying, he says, man, we must fulfill and continue. For even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect, because of the glory that excels. For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses who put a veil over his face, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was what? Passing away. So that is passing away. We are now in the ministry of righteousness, where we are constantly rejecting evil Desires. Does everybody get that? Now, this is where we got to protect our heart. We got to protect our heart. Now, your heart is associated with, it is the, um, the character of your spirit, but it's also associated in the area where it's kind of like what sometimes people call your soul or your heart or your innermost being, but it's basically your character. Because out of the heart, out of the mouth speaks the what? Heart. Why? Because that's out of your character. So whatever character you're allowing to rule your life, you're either allowing the character of Christ or character of the old man to rule your life. That's where your heart is at. Amen? And we don't want to have a stony heart because that's known as the ministry of death. <laughs> Which evil desires... Remember, evil desires were exposed by the law, which was written on stones. There's no coincidence to this. Uh, so it was associated with a stony heart. Everybody okay? But the power of the Holy Spirit produces the ministry of righteousness, which rejects evil desires. Psalm 19. In verse 7, I look at this as a guide to protect from evil desires. 
Would you read it with me? It says, the law of the Lord is what? Perfect, converting the soul. Mind, will, emotions, imaginations, choice. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be what? Desire. So there's something that you and I should be desiring. The work, the presence, pleasing God. For more to be desired are they than gold or money. Yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. Verse 11. Moreover, by them your servant is warned in keeping them. There is what? Great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from what? Secret faults. Things that have taken us captive and we don't even know. So you're asking God to expose them. Keep your servant also from what? Presumptuous sin, which is still evil desires. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless. I shall be innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeeming. And I'm going to close at Colossians 3. In verse 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind, your thoughts, your will, your desires on things above and not on things of the what? Earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. That's if you died. To what? Yourself. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members, which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you, you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off these, what are they? Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds. And put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on what? Tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of what? Perfection. So these are things he's telling us, which is going to assist me and you to reject evil desires. Amen? But putting off the old man, we now have uh, the disconnect prayer in our prayer booklet. It's important because one of the things we're disconnecting from is evil desires every day. Disconnecting from the entanglements and affairs of this world. Disconnecting from ourselves so that we can be connected. It's very hard to get connected if you're not disconnected first. See, people are trying to get connected when they're still they're not disconnected from worldliness. It's hard to connect if, does everybody understand that? So you've got to disconnect from the world and yourself so that you can connect. You've got to break all of these things off so that you can walk in the fullness of Christ Jesus, well-pleasing to him. There's nothing wrong with prosperity, and we are in a time of prosperity. So you must be careful. To not let take you out with evil desires. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Again, we repent for anything that we've done, cooperated with, or even agreed with any evil desire. 
whether on purpose or by ignorance. We ask for your forgiveness, that you'd wash us with the blood of Christ and that you would heal us with the stripes of Jesus, promising to give you all our glory and honor and praise as you loose us from every evil desire. Thank you.